This tank behind me is about to be transformed into something that I've wanted for a long time. Sweet. Here we go. What you're looking at right now is my 75 gallon grow out, quarantine, sometimes hospital tank. And I need a tank like this, but I've wanted to turn this tank into something cool for a long time. I just have no place to put a quarantine tank other than right here. But fortunately for me, my wife has relinquished control of her 55 gallon community tank. And now I can turn that into what this was, which will allow me to turn this into whatever the hell I want. A lot of you have been asking for an African cichlid and Buna tank. Well, okay, not that many of you have been asking, but I really want to have one, so that's what this is going to be. I'm going to get started on that, but the first thing I need to do is get that other tank ready to go. And that's going to mean moving some fish out and then switching out the sand, cleaning it up. You'll see. I'm going to show you right now. Let's go. All right, here I am with the tank in question, my wife's old tank, my new tank. I'm getting ready to get the fish out, so what I'm going to do is just real quick drop the water down so it's easier to catch them. And then some of that water I'm going to put in the bucket that I'm going to be taking those guys to the local pet store to give them their new home. And then, then I'm coming back and I'm going to be making some serious changes to this tank. All right, let's do it. Right after I said that, I decided to drop the water down only a little bit because I want to leave a lot of the water in the tank so I can run that filter all night and keep the beneficial bacteria alive. After I drop the fish off, I don't want to have to come back and refill the tank only to take it out again tomorrow. So tonight I'm just removing this ultra cheesy castle and some of the plants to make it easier to catch the fish. And I'm not even speeding this up. I actually move this fast. Not bad for an old guy, right? If you don't have enough water movement in your filter, then the bacteria in the filter will start to die off. And it's not like instantaneous, but still, it's best to keep that thing on as long as I can. Don't judge my wife for the condition of this tank, by the way. She's a very busy nurse who doesn't have time for this. She's not insanely obsessed with her fish like I am. And if you seriously don't have enough time for your fish, and rearranging your schedule isn't an option, then for the sake of your fish, it's probably best to get out of the hobby, at least until you have enough time to take care of your fish. All right. Caught them all, and just look at this crap floating around in the tank. It'll be nice to get it cleaned up. It's the next day, and I'm ready to start getting all the gravel and plants out of this tank when I notice a problem. Even though I double-checked that I caught all the fish out of this tank last night, apparently one popped out of thin air. Horrible. It's this rummy nose Tetra. I'm not heading back to town for this one little guy, unfortunately, and I have nowhere to put him. If I put him in the 180, he'll be lonely since he's a schooling fish. Plus, he could nip at my angel's fins. And that leaves one option, and I bet you know where I'm going with this. Yep, he's going into Alcatraz to be some lucky African cichlid supper. And if you don't want to see this, if you don't want to see him get eaten, then just skip ahead about 30 seconds. Caught him, now let's go to the big tank where he'll have the shortest recorded stay in Alcatraz. Keep an eye on Gary the Venustus. Dropping him in, and he's gone already. Oh. <laughs> that was super quick and a little anticlimactic if I'm being honest. Meh. I thought we'd at least see him swim away for a second. Gary doesn't even look like he just ate, but he did. That's a gourmet meal for this guy, and you deserve it, Gary. Good job, dude. Okay, back to business. There are just a few plants in here that I have to get rid of, and it's really stirring up a lot of that detritus again. So I thought it'd be a good idea to use a thoroughly clean dustpan to get this gravel out, but since it's a 55 gallon and so incredibly narrow, it works like shit. But don't worry, I have a plan B, which is a square plastic bowl, and it works like a charm. Absolutely brilliant. You will subscribe. Ding ding. Now that I have all this gravel out, it's time to suck most of this water out too. I'm using a siphon and bucket method, but I usually use my submersible pump when doing water changes. It's a lot quicker. Time to add some sand to give those Africans something to sift through and to boost that pH to about the upper sevens. I drove 60 miles round trip last night to get the sand I ordered from Petco, but it turned out they only had a one 10 pound bag. I guess they sent me an email telling me that, whatever. Anyway, fortunately I had a partial bag in the garage so I can at least get the bottom of the tank covered. And guess what? I'm not even rinsing the sand, just dumping it right in. And that's because this stuff right here is gonna take care of this cloudy water for me. It'll clean this up in no time. You'll see. I also added some prime to the tank to take care of the chlorine. 
In order for that AccuClear to clean this mess up, I'll have to open up my Fluval 407 filter to get some of that polyfill in there. AccuClear is what's called a flocculating agent, and it causes those extremely tiny particles from the sand I just added to bind together. They're too small to get caught by the filter as it stands, but this causes the tiny particles to bond together, making them large enough for the filter to catch. I still have to add something like polyfill though to catch those tiny particles, which are still pretty small. You'll be amazed at how quickly this clears up this filthy water. I'll show you. Okay, well that's about it for tonight. I'm really glad I was able to get all that stuff done. It, I think it took me probably about two hours longer than a normal person would take to get everything done. I'm really glad that I found that extra bag of aragonite sand to throw in the tank because it allowed me to cover the entire bottom of it, which will help bring that pH up for the lethronops that I'm gonna put in here and then the couple of fish that I'm gonna get in here next week. Also, I'm gonna get some window tint in either tomorrow or the next day that will allow me to get that nasty background off of this tank and then put in a nice solid black background, which you know how I love black. After that, I really don't have too much to do until I get my fish in, which should be about a week from this Thursday. I'm really looking forward to that. As for now, I think I'm done for the night, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and, I guess, do things that normal people do. I'm gonna go have some dinner and watch some Netflix. So, I'll see you soon. This is about two hours after I added the API AccuClear, and it's already looking shockingly clear. Sure, I'll have to clean the filters after this, but that's a lot quicker than cleaning the sand before I use it. Save me a lot of time. And as Khan said in Star Trek II, time is a luxury you do not have, Admiral. And now you're looking at the tank about another two hours later. Nice. This is day three, and I woke up to quite a scare. I checked my email, and I had one from Live Fish Direct, which was awesome, but it was telling me that I have a shipment a fish do, the ones that were going to be here a week from Thursday, they're on time for delivery tomorrow, which is this Thursday. And I, I guess I had the week wrong. I don't know how that happened, but Stupid. they're going to be here tomorrow. So I had to go to work and then rush down to the river after work to get a bunch of river rocks because I don't have this tank scaped properly. I tried to use some of the rocks that I have from Aqua Decor that I used in Alcatraz, but it's not cutting it for what I think Mbuna need. They're going to need more caves and a lot more smaller rock structures. So I'm gonna get those rocks cleaned up, get these out, put those in, and I'm also gonna get the Lethronops, the two Lethronops and my three John Stonies out of here and put them in the 55 gallon tank, which is looking fine now. And I have to get off work early tomorrow to get those fish from Live Fish Direct into this tank. And I'll show you that. That'll be the next time you see me. But for now, let's get all this stuff done tonight and get it ready for tomorrow. All right. Two nets is the way to go in catching your fish. Unfortunately, my second net vanished recently, so I'm stuck with one net. And let me tell you, even with the rocks gone, this still sucks, and it just gets worse when I start catching the John Stonies. In fact, let's just skip catching the fish. It's pretty boring anyway, right? Skipping to the cool part where I start adding rocks to the tank. Like my peacocks and haps and alcatraz, Mbuna are also African cichlids. But there are a lot of differences between peas and haps and Mbuna, even though, for the most part, they're from the same lake, Lake Malawi. The inmates of Alcatraz like open swimming space and are constantly racing back and forth in the tank. Too much decor and they might get attached to it and then decide everyone who swims by it needs to die. Stay away from my gold! These Mbuna guys need lots of rocks with some good hiding places. They don't race end to end in the tank, but mainly flow in and out of the nooks and crannies. So I'm attempting to set these rocks that I just cleaned up in a way that'll give them plenty of caves and narrow alleyways. And Buna are very aggressive, even more so than my guys in Alcatraz, so I want to keep them as mellow as I can by giving them what they need. We'll see how I do with that. In this box is my drug of choice. And don't judge me too hard. You know you're just like me. A couple of notes here before I get these guys unpacked. Whenever I'm getting ready to acclimate some fish by floating them in the tank they're gonna go in, before I do that, I check them out to make sure that first of all, they're the right fish, it's labeled correctly, and then also that they're healthy, that they look like they're not stressed out or having a hard time, maybe even unable to keep themselves upright. If that's the case where it looks like 
they're in dire straits. I'm, I'm just gonna forego that acclimation process and I'm not gonna float them. I'm just gonna, going to open up the bag, pour the water out and put them directly in the tank. So let's get these guys unboxed and see what we got. I'll show you each one of them. The box was actually warm. I mean, when I put my hand on the bottom of the box, it didn't feel cold and it just came from outside where it was definitely below freezing because it's snowing out there and it felt nice and warm. So that's good. These fish should be fine as far as temperature goes. Here's one of the heat packs on top, nice and toasty still. Oh good, it doesn't have any of that fiberglass insulation type stuff that you get in some boxes where it sticks to the bags and you probably inhale a bunch of it. Looks like the first one I grabbed thought so, my redfin borlei, which is replacing the one that I lost. Now it looks like he might have taken a few dumps in here, but I don't know if you can see that okay. Oh jeez. This next one is an Mbuna, and I might not be able to pronounce these correctly. This looks like it's a Mangano cichlid. He's kind of a big boy. Looks like a smaller bag. And this one is my white top Hara Afra. He looks like he's doing great. And for the next one, Cynotilapia zebroides deep Ndonga or Ndonga. I'm not sure how you say that. If you guys know, let me know. Looks like he's perfectly healthy. Metriaclima zebra Kawanga gold. I'm not going with breeder groups in this tank. I just decided to go with all males. First of all, I, I don't want to have fry. I mean, they probably end up just getting eaten anyway because I don't want to deal with breeding fish, at least not at this point. And right here, I have a clown lab. He looks pretty good. And next on the list is a textilis or textilis. This one is totally different from most of the ones that I've ordered. He looks quite a bit different. Let me turn him around. Doesn't have that typical Mbuna look. And I tried to keep all these guys to around the four to five inch mark, although I think I might have one or so six inches. And this one is a red top Trebovase. Pretty cool looking fish. What we have here is a Misobo or M. Sobo, Magunga, M. M. Sogo, <laughs> Misogo Magunga cichlid. Looks like he's doing great. He does have a little poop floating around in there, but he looks healthy and stress free. And this one is a Stigmatochromus tole. And this guy's going with the Redfin Borlei in the other tank because he's not an Imbuna. We have the White Tail Aci, and I am really looking forward to this guy. From what I saw photos of these, they are beautiful. They get kind of a darker color with a nice white tail. Very contrasty. This is a little tiny bag. Okay, this is another, it doesn't say that this is an unsexed one, but he is. And he's a rusty. I'm not sure if he's a hybrid or what they do to get a rusty, but he's really cool looking. And he, he looks kind of like I was expecting him to look already. A lot of the others are kind of paled out because they're so young or scared, but not this guy. I mean, he looks pretty good. He's one of the ones that I was looking forward to the most. This one is my Labi Labiotrophus ochre, okri? Not sure exactly how to say that one, of course. He looks feisty. And last but not least, I have my Fire Red Uganda, which is actually a hap from Lake Victoria. Looks like he's doing all right. All right, it's been 15 to 20 minutes. Looks like they're all doing fine. I've been keeping an eye on them. I'm gonna get them out of those bags without putting any of that water inside the bag into the tank. I'm just gonna release it into a bucket, put them in a net. And then I'm also gonna put some of this stress guard into the tank as well. And that'll help take the edge off. Okay, let's do it. I've almost ordered from Live Fish Direct in the past, but something always came up, so I was happy to finally place an order with them. I was in contact with Josh and Laura at their facility, and they were really helpful and nice. They raise many of their fish from fry, and, and this is cool. They actually care about them and get to know lots of their fish on a somewhat individual basis as they watch them flourish. 
I think that's kind of how I would be as a fish breeder, you know? You can tell it's fun for them, just like I have fun making these videos. It's good to do what you like. And speaking of liking... Adding some of that sweet, sweet stress guard. It says it promotes healing and reduces stress. And fish are always stressed to some degree when they go through the shipping process. Life Fish Direct does a good job giving their fish plenty of room in the boxes to make them comfortable. And I think that helps them to be healthy and vibrant once they settle in. This is me, photobombing my own video. Something wrong with that guy. After adding the Imbuna to the 75 gallon tank, it looked like they didn't quite have enough hiding places. And so I went back down to the river in the snow to get some more rocks for the tank. And if you ever accuse me of not loving my fish, then I'll stick one of my wiener dogs on you. They'll gum you to death. Uh, I'm gonna add those rocks to this tank and give them a few more hiding spots. And then later on tonight, after they've had a, a longer time of settling in, I'll show you both tanks and how the fish are doing. My redfin Borley, I was looking a little dazed and I was a bit worried about him. He even started to drift into a vertical position, which is never a good sign. He was stressed out, but I'm happy to say that he snapped out of it. I decided not to show much more of the 55 gallon tank at this time. I still need to add the black tint to the back panel anyway, and I'll get to that when I make my Ambuna update video in a few weeks. In that video, I'll go over all the fish in detail for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified when I release the video. I think these Imbuna really appreciate the extra rocks I grabbed for them. And if you already have an Imbuna tank and you have some suggestions for me on how to keep these guys, I would sure appreciate that if you would leave those in the comments for me. If you have peacocks and haps and you have trouble with their aggression levels, then make sure you watch this video where I talk about that and how to curb that aggression. You've been watching the Cichlid Charmer and as always, God bless, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.